What's up guys, Reggie B. Photo here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I sharpen my Fuji RAW files in Adobe Lightroom. Let me take a look at my notes during this whole video. Also, I want to apologize in advance if there's a lot of background noise. I'm just taking advantage of this downtime I have, and I'm filming this video in a public place. So, bear with me. If you're no stranger to Fujifilm cameras, you're probably aware of that. Fuji RAW files have a bad reputation when it comes to sharpening an Adobe Lightroom. Worms. No, not those kind of worms. These kind of worms. While many Fujifilm users are ditching Lightroom in lieu of other software like Capture One, Iridian Developer, I'm not sure what other software people are using. There are photographers like me who can't afford to ditch Lightroom due to the organization aspect or just the advantage in terms of workflow speed and batch processing. For organizing and editing a large amount of photos in a short amount of time, positives of Lightroom really outweigh this con. So before I tell you my settings, let's go over a few facts. First, the wormy artifacts appear when the sharpening slider is around 30 to 40, and it gets progressively worse as you increase past 100. But the truth is, any RAW file actually from any camera system, Fuji or not, will get worms and artifacts if you over sharpen the photo. Second, most other camera manufacturers, which Lightroom also supports, have sensors with a conventional Bayer filter array. These cameras have anti-aliasing filters, which reduce the overall sharpness of the sensor output in order to avoid problematic detail areas, such as the moiré effect. On the other hand, Fujifilm cameras that suffer this worm problem actually have sensors with the x trans filter array. This unique array minimizes the moiré effect and eliminates the need for an anti-aliasing filter. This in turn results in increased sharpness straight out of the camera. So knowing this, my hunch is that the Lightroom sharpening actually isn't broken. And it's not broken specifically for the Fujifilm RAW files either. Instead, people are incorrectly trying to sharpen Fuji RAW files as they would any other file from another camera system. Nikon, Canon, Sony, Olympus, Leica, I don't know. All of which have the conventional Bayer filter array. Since the X-Trans files are sharper out of the camera, it makes sense that the threshold for over sharpening is a lot less. So in other words, a little sharpening for Fujifilm files goes a long way. And to put things into perspective, it's not a new concept that people apply different Lightroom settings differently for each different camera manufacturer. I said different a lot. <laughs> for example, if you crank up the shadows or exposure on a Canon file, you will encounter noise a lot sooner than you would if you did the same to a Nikon or Sony file. In that case, how come no one ever complains that the exposure or shadow slider is broken for Canon files? Yet, Fujifilm users feel compelled to complain that the sharpening is broken in Lightroom for their Fuji RAF files. When more often than not, maybe we just need to change up the way that we approach sharpening and the overall settings that we use. All right. Now that explanation is over, let's get ready to sharpen some files. Sorry, you can't really make sharpening more exciting than it really is. Alright, let's jump into Lightroom. So before we get started, let's first zoom into this example photo um, that was taken with my Fujifilm X-C3 at 100% and actually understand what each of the sharpening sliders do. And for those of you who don't already know, if you actually hold down the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac, while you adjust the sharpening sliders, Lyron will actually show you the photo in either black or white, um, like this, or black or gray, um, depending on what you're, what slider you're using. Um, and that helps you better judge the sharpening effect on your photo. So, again, let's zoom back in 100%. And then, um, first up is the amount. And then, so the amount does exactly what you think it does. It determines the amount of sharpening that you're applying to the image. And a value of zero means that no sharpening is added. And if we move the slider and hold the Alt key and increase the slider, we see that more sharpening is being added. Set that back to default. So next is the radius. Um, basically, this determines the size of the sharpening area around the edges. So a default 
value of 1 means the sharpening will be applied to one pixel around the edge. And then if we increase this to the maximum of 3, we can see that sharpening will be spread over 3 pixels around each edge. And third is the detail slider. Um, so this defines how fine of an edge will apply Lightroom sharpening to um, a value of zero will only sharpen the largest of edges. And then if we increase it to the maximum value of 100, we can see that the finer details are going to be sharpened. Um, but be careful with this one though, as raising the slider to the higher values will actually sharpen any grain or noise artifacts in your image. So if we actually go into the background here, you can see that going from 0 to 100 will actually bring out the artifacts in this background right here. Reset that. And lastly, um, the masking slider. So similar to Photoshop, masking will let us dictate which areas of photos we don't want sharpening applied to. A value of zero will apply sharpening to the entire photo. White means that sharpening will be added to it. And then as we increase the value, anything shown in black will not have sharpening applied. This is really useful in targeting just the subject. It also helps remove any over sharpening um, artifacts created from the amount or detail sliders. So like I mentioned before, the background would be a good place since right now we have background being sharpened, which we don't want, and then we can increase the slider until that goes away. But more on that later. All right. Now that we have an understanding of what all the sharpening sliders do, let's pinpoint what is actually causing all these wormy artifacts on Fuji RAW files. So first, I'm going to re recreate this problem that everyone complains about. And I'm going to use the default Lightroom sharpening as a starting point, um, which is 40, radius of 1, detail 25, masking 0. So I'm going to zoom in to 100% and I'm going to drop the sharpening amount down to zero. And then I'm going to slowly increase the amount until we start to see some worms. All right now you can start to see the worms right there. And you can see it pretty clearly at a value of 150. All right, so now let's drop this down to the middle, 75. And let's drop detail slider down. Let's slowly increase this detail slider to 100. And we can see that the worm effect is actually more pronounced with that going to 100. If we leave this detail slider to at 100, Let's slowly drop the amount slider till we don't see the artifacts anymore. It's around 40 or 30. You can see that the artifacts kind of disappear. So why is this happening? And why does this happen to Fuji files? Well, from what I've explained earlier in the video, it seems that the detail slider was actually designed to recover the tiny details that were lost due to the blurring effects of the anti-aliasing filter. For cameras that have sensors with the traditional Bayer filter array. And because Fuji cameras have the X-Trans sensor and do not have this anti-aliasing filter, the smaller details are retained. And this results in needing very to little no sharpening for the tinier edges in the photo. And this also means that once you pass that sweet spot, like what we saw here, um, you'll cross into over sharpening territory very quickly. The result of maxing out the sliders will be a lot uglier than when compared to other manufacturers.
So to help illustrate this point, I've actually got a few photos of the same couple to make sure that we're on a level playing field. And I have an example of a Fujifilm X-T3 RAW file and a Nikon D750 RAW file. Just to show you guys that basically the RAW sensor output from the Fuji is actually a lot sharper. Um, straight out of camera in comparison to a camera from um, that has a Bayer filter array. So just to show you what I've got set up here on this file, I have sharpening at zero, and that is with a Fujifilm X-T3. And here is a different photo of the same couple, um, sharpening zero with the Nikon D750. And if we compare these two, oops, and we zoom in to both photos, you can clearly see that the details are a lot clearer in the Fuji's files. And then just to play devil's advocate here, let's max, let's recreate the worm situation on both these cameras. So here I'm going to max out the amount and detail slider here. Once we go to 100%, we can see it's not a very pretty picture. And we're going to go to the Nikon D750 files. And since all the Fuji film users complain that this is a specific to the Fujifilm X Trans RAW files, this shouldn't happen and you shouldn't get any warming artifacts. So let's zoom into 100 and let's max out the amount and let's max out the detail and look what do we have here same amount of artifacts we can compare these two together let that load a little bit and we can see that it's just as bad. So for all those people that are crying that Fujifilm and Lightroom need to fix how sharpening works with Fujifilm, you shouldn't be sharpening this much on either camera system. Okay, I know that was a lot, but if you stuck around me until this point, I am finally going to share with you guys my approach for sharpening Fuji RAW files. Um, so using the Lightroom default sharpening settings as a starting point, um, first I'm going to keep my radius set to the default of 1, and I'm actually going to drop my detail slider down to 0. Now I'm going to focus here on the most important part of my photo, which is this subject, and for human subjects it's usually the eyes. Then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and gradually increase the details, I mean, sorry, the amount slider. For me, this is usually good around 70 to 100. That looks pretty good to me. And then um, then I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to head to the most the like non-essential part of my photo. So usually this is the background here. I can actually use this part. since it's a good depiction of background here. And I'm going to press Alt or Option key on a Mac and increase the masking until there's no sharpening being applied to the background. And this usually happens around 50 to around 70. To 75, depending on how detailed your photo is. Once you settle on a value, just zoom out. Just make sure your subject is still going to be sharpened. 
and that is how I sharpen my Fujifilm RAW files. So here, if you want to make things easier, I'm gonna make this to a clean number. And then, um, let's see. And then, in some cases, you actually can, if you want to, apply some noise reduction in order to, because there's no amount of masking that will remove the re remaining amount of artifacts in here. You can apply a little bit of noise reduction just to smooth out these parts in the background and the artifacts here. Um, right there, I'm pretty happy with the results of this. And all you other Fuji film users cannot disagree that this photo looks pretty dang sharp and it was edited fully in Lightroom. If this video helped you out, oops. I messed up, where am I? If this video helped you out, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you have any questions or comments on how I apply sharpening or the settings that I use, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. And also feel free to share with other users what your sharpening settings are for your Fujifilm camera. Please list what camera model you're using as well. As always, please subscribe to my channel for more Fujifilm and photography content. And if you're on Instagram, please follow me at, at ReggieBPhoto. All right, that's it for me. Make sure to get out, go shoot, What's next? Uh, oh yeah, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.